Hello everybody and welcome to your next C Sharp XNA tutorial. Um, now for some exciting news I have decided that I'm going to be teaching you guys a few um, more basic principles about making a basic game and then I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a space shooter. Uh, one like the one that they have on the XNA um, app hub but I'm going to be showing you my own method of doing it with advanced properties such as um, different menus uh, uh, saving, loading, uh, and all the all that special stuff. Uh, so first of all, we need in order to make games, we need to learn about um, loading. I'm um, doing sprite animations because um, a lot of games have animations. Well, except if you're doing like Pong or something where it just there's no animations but if you want the character to have like a walking animation or something from a sprite sheet then this tutorial is for you and I'll show you how to do it without sprite sheets as well um, if you guys don't understand what I'm talking about then you will after um, so this might be divided up into two or three videos so hopefully you enjoy it so the sprite sheet we're going to be using is this one it contains four images across and four images down. Its uh, dimensions are 128 by 192, meaning that uh, their each image is 32 pixels wide and 48 pixels long. So, um, since this is XNA, XNA is strictly an object-oriented language. So, why not we manipulate that and work with um, object-oriented properties? So, what we want to do is we want to create a class. And we're gonna name this a uh, player. Sorry for the sniffling. I'm kind of sick. So uh, we're gonna name this player. So this is gonna control the player, all the input, the drawing, etc., etc. And we're gonna make another class called animation, and that's gonna handle animation. Now, why do we have an animation class? Why not put everything into player? Well, um, this is good habits because uh, more than one things are gonna have animations in your game. Um, when you use um, many different things might have sprite sheets, including the enemies, players, certain items on the screen, etc., etc. So it's good if everything can um, derive from an animation class or at least use animation class properties instead of repeating the code. The whole point of object-oriented programming is to make it so that you don't have to continuously repeat code over and over again you do it once and you reuse it so if we look at our code right here we have two classes and I want you to make them public so um right here we're going to be coming we're going to be adding a bunch of uh things first of all we have to since we're using a different class um the default um namespaces that you get in game1.cs aren't in there now in game1.cs you see a lot of these things right here and all of these are incorporated because all of these are needed. For our player and animation classes we only need three. All we need is a framework um, and actually for the animation we just need the framework and the graphics. So what we're going to do is going to be making a frame count, frame counter, um, a variable called switch frame. Uh, we're going to be making a vector 2 for position, uh, amount of frames, and uh, I believe that's it for now. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating uh, three different methods. Initialize method, uh, uh, update method, and then the parameter is going to have game time. So like so game time and the draw method oh I don't know why it keeps on doing that sorry sprite batch and we're gonna name it sprite batch so just like the same way as we have in our game1.cs we have initialize load content now we have update and draw so if we go back to animation uh, there's another thing we want to add we want to add texture 2d image so uh what we're going to do is that we're going to go to play the player class and we're going to uh, add our namespaces so the default framework the content uh, and we're going to be loading the we're going to be in the graphics so first we need the texture for the player image uh, we need 
the player position and that's all we're gonna have for right now so let's make um, our the methods that we need so you should always have an initialize method uh, a load content method this time because we're actually loading content and then parameters is going to be a content manager and I'm sorry if I'm going a bit fast but I'll explain this once I'm done creating the, um, the methods uh, we have to put game time in the parameters and we're going to put sprite batch so now what is all this doing well before in our our um, our earlier tutorials we we had all this done for us we see protected override void draw a protected override void update and all that stuff and we see game time in the parameters we see sprite batch and uh, we see game time in this parameter but we use sprite batch to do drawing and stuff which is initialized up um, right here and we in our low content method we don't see anything called content manager or anything but yet we still use a variable called content in order to do our loading so um if you've learned basic c uh, sharp you can pass in certain values uh into your into your methods and then you can use these certain values in order to manipulate to do certain things so what we're going to be do so what we've done here is that we've manipulated the game time um, game time library or game time class and we manipulated the sprite batch class and we just we're just going to be making a copy of the sprite batch in order to do the drawing and a copy of the game time in order to actually um, manipulate frames per second now I know I haven't taught you guys about game time yet manipulating frames per second but you will learn about this at the end of um, these few videos so um the game time handles frames per second sprite batch handles drawing so if we go to um the player something called the content manager is what we use to actually load the content and the content manager is called content so we're basically passing in the variable content so we can actually load in the stuff into our game so if we go straight to the content manager we're gonna put a uh, player image is equal to content dot load texture 2d and the name of it it's in the sprites folder and it's called black male and you don't need to put png so this is basically this shouldn't be any um, unfamiliar to you you've seen this when we were working with sprites it's the same thing but whatever the name you put for right here is the name you're gonna have to use to actually load in the actual sprites so now we've actually loaded in our player image sprite so uh... what we have to do is handle the update and the oh, i spelled that wrong we need to handle the update and the draw so we could actually do all the update functions right here but we're gonna actually let the animation class handle the updates and the drawing for us and the update right here um, the stuff we input here is gonna be the actual input like the directional buttons and the animation class is gonna actually handle the um, updating the animations and drawing the animations to the screen so uh, quickly before this video ends I'm gonna be showing you how we're gonna do this so if we look um, forget about the initializer now we're gonna be working with the update so far so what we're gonna be doing is that we're gonna be we're gonna be learning about the actual frames per second so copy what I type frame counters equal to int game time dot elapsed game time dot total milliseconds now what did I just do right here basically the game time basically the game time handles everything that has to do with time in the game you can get the total play time that you've played you can get the amount of middle milliseconds since the last frame the amount of milliseconds that passed since you've been playing the game etc etc it's not like the date time class it's its own separate class that's built in with xna so the game time what we're doing we're saying a uh, game time dot elapsed game time dot total milliseconds so we're basically finding out the um, how much milliseconds has passed since the last frame and we're doing this in order to 
of figure out when we should switch the frames in order to draw the next frame. So how it's going to work is this. Say um we are pressing the down key. When we're pressing the down key, we want to draw these four set of images right here. These four here. So what it's going to do is that we need to start drawing this frame right here. We need to wait a certain amount of time and then we need to switch the frame to this. Wait a certain amount of time, switch the frame to this. Wait a certain amount of time, then switch the frame to this. Why are we waiting some or why are we waiting a certain amount of time? Well, the reason why we have frames per second in a game is because frames per second is what is used to regulate your game so that it runs the same speed on every single computer. So it doesn't matter what grade of computer you have, you could have the fastest PC in the world or the slowest PC in the world, but it, your game will generally run the same speed on every single type of computer. So the reason why we do that is that we wait a set amount of time that it will set on every single computer, then it will switch for the next frame. If we don't use the game time class, then if my computer is super fast and it will cycle through these um cycle through these images in such a fast rate that it will look like the legs or the image is moving at such a fast pace. It's gonna look like the animation is moving way too fast. So we regulate it at a certain pace when it cycles through the image and it looks like a smooth animation. So I'm gonna be leaving you guys with that information right now and we're gonna continue this in the next tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and bye.